In section 1.5, we're looking at different angle pair relationships that exist. The first one we're going to look at is complementary angles. So if I look at the uh, examples I have below, I have angles 1 and 2 together form a pair of angles, and then the 25 and 65. If we look at those two, ang those two sets of angles, they have something in common. Both of those sets add to 90 degrees. So complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. We better clarify that, though, whose angle measure is the sum of 90 degrees. Got to make sure we're using the right um, vocabulary there. So, two angles whose angle measure is the sum of 90 degrees. So I add two angles. They equal 90 degrees. Now, it's not one angle is 90 degrees. That's a right angle. These are a pair of angles, two of them. Two angles that add to 90 degrees. Now, they can be either adjacent or non-adjacent. We'll get to what that means later on, but we can kind of see that. The one on the left with angle 1 and 2 is adjacent. Notice how they share a side. Uh, the one on the right, the 25 and the 65, yeah, they're close to each other, but they really have nothing in common. There's nothing connecting, holding them together. Those would actually be non-adjacent. The other thing we have here is that each of these angles are the complement of the other. So even though we call them complementary angles, we would say that A is a complement of B, and B is a complement of A. So if you know one of the angles, let's say I knew one of them was 25, and they asked me for its complement, I'm looking for the other angle that gets it to 90 degrees, and that would be 65. Now, pair of supplementary angles is the same idea. It's two angles, but we can kind of see what occurs there. They don't add up to 90 degrees, but that first pair add up to a straight line, and the second pair adds up to 180. So this is two angles whose angle measures have a sum of 180 degrees. So if I have a measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, I would say they're 180 degrees. They add up to be a straight line. A straight angle is a common way you're going to see that. So we've just said they can be adjacent or non-adjacent for complementary. Same thing works for supplementary. I have the top example is 1 and 2, share that side, they're together, they're attached. The bottom example, I have the 110 and 70, they're not really attached, they're just kind of near each other, so those would be non-adjacent. Also with the same of complementary, each angle is a supplement of the other. If I said, give me the supplement of 110 degrees, you would give me the angle that pairs with it to make 180 degrees, and it would be 70. Now we get to our adjacent angles. And adjacent angles are two angles that share a common side and a vertex, but they have no common interior points. So let's write that down. Two angles that share a side and a vertex. But when we say they have no common interior points, what we're saying is there's no overlap. So for example, if I drew an angle, and then I put another one on top of it, I wouldn't say that this angle and this angle are adjacent because there's an overlap there. We can't have that. So that's what we mean by no overlap. So they share a side and they share a vertex. So let's kind of look through our examples here. I have a vertex in common. I have a side in common. I have the side in common. Vertex in common. I have the vertex. I have the side. Now, those are all adjacent angles. A counterexample to that would be 
kind of like some of the ones we've already seen. Here's an angle. Here's another one. They don't share a side. They don't share a vertex. Maybe if I had something like these two angles. Those two angles, they share a vertex, but they don't share a side. Uh, let's do another example. What if I did... something like this angle and this one. So they share a side, but their vertices, or the, the vertex of each, are different. Those would also not be adjacent. The other thing to notice here is I have say nothing about their measurement. If we're saying adjacent angles, we need something else if we're going to do something about their measurement. And we're going to see later on there are certain stipulations that occur, and they need to be adjacent for properties to exist. But for right now, adjacent means they share a side, and a vertex. So why do we need this adjacent? Well, a linear pair of angles is an important one to look at. So a linear pair, if we look, have a few things in common. First of all, I have 1 and 2 in my angles there. I already said they were supplementary if they formed a straight line. And that works in both of these. Now we also have that they're adjacent. Notice they share their side they share their vertex. So this is actually a pair of angles that are supplementary and adjacent. So it's not an either or. It has to be two angles that are supplementary and adjacent. It's either both or not at all. So when we see linear pair, what are we typically going to do? Usually you're going to be solving with them. So we know that they are supplementary. But when we have properties that have to do with a linear pair later on, we also have to make sure they are adjacent. So for right now, they're supplementary and adjacent. What you're going to use to solve, though, if I gave you angle 1 and wanted you to find angle 2, is the fact that they are supplementary and they add up to 180. Now, an example of angles that would not be a linear pair. If I had these two angles and I had 100 and one was 80, these would not be a linear pair because they are supplementary, but they are not adjacent. If I had these two angles, these two angles are adjacent, but they're not supplementary. The next term we have is vertical angles. And our definition says they're vertical angles if their sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at our top picture. I have two opposite rays right here. They share a point, and they go in opposite directions. I also have opposite rays here. Share a point, go in opposite directions. So that gives me that 1 and 2 are vertical angles. Now, I'm not a big fan of that definition. Yes, it is correct, and we, we do need to make sure we give it that, that thought, because that allows us to have vertical angles, but another way we can think of it is if you have two lines intersect then vertical angles are on the opposite side of the vertex. Because now I can look at the picture and say, okay, 1 and 2, opposite sides. I have my intersection, they're across from each other. They're not next to each other because that would be adjacent here. But they're across from each other. It's kind of like you're standing at an intersection. Uh, bottom diagram shows it pretty well. You're standing at an intersection. 
Here you are at angle 1. And if you look across the opposite side of the intersection, that's to the vertical angle to you. Just to the next to you would be adjacent. But we're looking for that opposite side. That's going to be the vertical angle. So let's start identifying some of them. So let's go through our complementary first. Complementary, we know we add up to 90 degrees. Well, I can see I have this 90 degrees there, but I'm not going to say CED is complementary, because for, for complementary, I need two angles. What I actually get, though, is these two angles are also 90 degrees. So I'm going to say that angle AEB and BEC are complementary. Now I look, I don't really have any more complementary. So let's do our supplementary. And these are two angles that add up to a straight line. Well, I could take that angle AEB and use it again. But this time it gets paired with BED. That gives us a straight line. And these are these two angles. Okay, now we do have another supplementary pair. And that's going to be angle AEC and angle CED. So that is this angle and this angle. Okay? Now when we look at adjacent angles, actually all three of these are adjacent pairs. So we're going to put a little star next to it because they are all adjacent. So those three are all adjacent. They share a side. A way we can cheat and kind of notice that, notice how this one has EB and EB. EB, EB, EC, CE. When they share a side, they'll have those two letters in common. So all of those are adjacent. Uh, we even have another one we could say angle BEC and angle CED. Now that one's not complementary. It's not supplementary, but they do share a side, and that would be EC that we use. Okay, the last one now is we're going to have to solve with them. So we know complementary and supplementary. So I look at the diagram and I see that the two angles, AEB and BED, are supplementary. Because they form a straight line, I know they add up to 180. So I know angle AEB plus angle BED is equal to 180 degrees. So we have 4x plus 13 plus 18x minus 9 equals 180. This gives me 22x plus 4 equals 180. Or 22x equals 176. If I divide both sides by 22, I get 8. So now I can plug back in. We'll go here and say 4 times 8 plus 13. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 8 is 45 degrees. And then 18 times 8 minus 9 actually comes out to be 135. So I have 45, 135, those add up to 180, which is what we wanted. So we know that the measure of angle AEB is 45 degrees, and the measure of angle BED is 135. Okay, now we move down. i got to solve this one. So let's see. I can go with the supplementary first to find the x's. And that's saying that 9x plus 20 plus 7x equals 180. I get 16x plus 20 equals 180, which becomes 16x equals 160, so x is 10. Now I'm just going to plug that back in. So I get x is 10, this is 70, and this is 110. 
Now I can use that to help me out because I know what these two angles have to add up to 180. I know that 110 plus 2y equals 180. 2y equals 70, so y is 35 degrees.